Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chad. So glad that you joined us today on FBC Missions So That podcast. Uh, today we're going to be interviewing Savannah and hearing about how God has worked in her life. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Hi, and welcome to Season 4 of FBC Missions So That podcast. This is an encouraging place to hear how God is working in and around us. We know that He blesses His people so that they can bless the world around them. Why is God working in our life, church, and community? It's so that through us, the world will know that He is near. Hey, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. Welcome to the podcast today. We have a lot of uh, great uh, content coming for you today. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have a family joining us today uh, talking about just the way that God has moved in their lives. And, uh, and so uh, we're interviewing Heather and Savannah, and uh, it's super fun. Uh, we'll hear about how God has been moving in Savannah this summer and, and some bigger things that God has done uh, a long time ago in her life and how those things relate. So first thing, ladies, how are you? We're doing, doing good. great. Yeah, it's great to have you guys here. Um, super exciting to, to hear this story. Um, so <sighs> things are cool. The mosquitoes are biting. Yep, uh, it's, it's, uh, we've had a little bit wetter, uh, summer so far than we did last year. So that's kind of nice. Uh, how are you enjoying the day, your summer, all those things, everything going okay? It's been a great summer, mission trips and student youth camp, Cairo and all the good things. All the good things. Yep. Savannah, you're getting ready for college. You're nervous? Definitely. <laughs> well, we're excited. We're super excited for you. Uh, so let's uh, let's jump into this. So uh, Savannah, you've been thinking about this and, and wanted to tell your testimony and just share some of the ways that God's been moving in your life. So, uh, so tell us how you want to start. So for me, um, it's been a, like a lifelong thing for me to want to take tell my testimony and uh, every time I feel like I'm so unprepared and not wanting to you know I'm always like I you know bawling my eyes out and so <laughs> I don't yeah I never was prepared to want to tell my testimony but um, now like I God has prepared me along the way and so especially this summer I was a part of the Yucatan mission trip team and um, I had the privilege of going there and um, experience experiencing the people down there and um, you've been there before right yes i've been there three three times three third, times this is your third this trip was third, my third okay. time yes awesome. yeah and so uh just seeing that um you know people are open down there and uh especially the incoming seniors that went down there they really took initiative and um stepped up and they a few of them knew spanish really well and so they actually told their testimonies down there in spanish and it just uh showed me like wow like they have that um that courage to do that and the um so that just inspired me to want to tell my testimony in yeah. English, of course, but, um, yeah. tell my testimony. And, um, and so then after that, um, Cairo happened and I was like, wow, like it, it was perfect, uh, theme that happened, uh, that was there. And, um, it was revival generation, which was talking about like how we, the youth can be the next, um, uh, generation to tell about the gospel and who Jesus is. And so, um, Nick Person was a speaker there, and he was talking about how testimony is a huge part of that, and like relating to the other to other people is like you know we can talk about your testimony and you know show them that they're not going to be perfect, they're not going to be you know. Uh, I want to give just a little context while you're working on that. So, so I don't know that all of our listeners know all of the the little things that Cairo is, or or so. So we just this summer our t our church every summer has been sending teams to Yucatan. This year we had uh, a team of 35 people uh, that went for a week, and uh, we work with some church planters and uh, a ministry called uh, YWAM Cancun. Um, that, that has a school and there's a lot of opportunities this year. Some of the plans didn't go the way that they expected and it opened up the opportunity for them to do some street evangelism, which was a little different than what we normally do, uh, on that trip. And so Savannah was talking about how they got to share their testimonies and some of our students were Spanish speakers as well. So that helped, uh, in addition to that, every year our, our church sends out our Cairo 
camp. It's uh, it's it's uh, the youth camp, um, and they had this year went to to New Mexico to Glorieta, and uh, had a, a youth camp speaker, Nick, and and uh, and so a lot of great stories have come out of both of those events: the summer mission trip, and then of course the 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 youth camp that just got back a couple of weeks ago. And so uh, so thanks for for giving us a little bit of a glimpse of what's going on inside of those things. So so please continue. So Nick Person was talking about how testimony is a huge part of um, sharing your sharing the gospel and being a light to others, and how you know we can relate to one another, and um, that we're not you know we can be there for one another. Yeah. So, so one of the things we really fund is to talk about what is your testimony, not not necessarily we'll t- we want to get to your story, but uh, the the a testimony is is. Um, is an important part of every believer's um, story. How, how do you how do you think about it, Heather? How do you when you think about the word testimony and what it means? When someone says, "Can you share your testimony?" What do you what do you think about? Uh, the testimony is your very unique story and how um, Jesus meets you and how you meet Jesus and how the Holy Spirit works through you to um, just form a new relationship with Christ. And it's the beautiful thing about it is that it's different for everybody. It's, it's not a template, you know, one size fits all thing. Um, and we are empowered and called to share our testimony with others to encourage them in their faith journey. Yeah. So our testimony really is our own experience. It's helping people. It, oftentimes you hear the word testimony, you know, like how you met Christ, right? Like what was kind of the first way that the Lord revealed himself to you? Um, but it really can be lots of things. It can be testimonies of how he's been faithful since then, showing ways that that I can see God's work in my life uh, ever since I came to Christ that first time. And uh, and so, yeah, it's been really fun hearing about how our students this summer have been sharing their testimonies. They, they've been learning how to express what God's doing in their life to others. And uh, And so today, we really get to hear Savannah's testimony and, and this story of how God has, has impacted you. And, uh, and it's a cool story. And I'm Savannah's mom, and I've seen her testimony grow throughout the years, and I've seen God working in her life, and um, I've just watched her piece her testimony together, and, and now it's ready. She's ready. Um, God has, has given her this time and this place and this day to share her story, and yeah. it's amazing. A well, fun thing, just just for those of you who are listening, is that Savannah is is about to leave for her freshman year of college. So she just graduated from high school, and uh, and uh, she was adopted uh, early in her life. And uh, and and so uh, Heather and and Savannah both have a part of this story, and uh, that's why the the two of them are here together. So so yeah, ladies, I want to hear it. Tell me tell me your story, Savannah. Okay, hey, once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time. Um, so I was adopted when I was five years old, but um, I think I've been told that um, when I was probably like a month or so old, I was put in an orphanage. And so from that time till I was five, I was in an orphanage, beginning of my life. And so. Do you um, have any memory of that? Nope. No, None of it. It's only from photos, really, uh-huh. of the adoption. Okay. Um, but I don't, unfortunately, do not know anything of it. Um, no, no, it's okay. I was just interested to know. That's 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 yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's very interesting. Mm. Um, but of course, at such a young age, I don't, you know, not a lot of memories are kept because you're yeah, still yeah. developing. So, yeah, of course. But. I don't have very memories, many at all. I, I don't know if any of my memories are four or five. So, like, uh, just yeah, so exactly, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not <laughs> uncommon. That's awesome. So, you lived in an orphanage. Yes, and uh, so I'm from China, of course, but um, uh, what's the going down? From Shenzhen. 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 Yes, um, and I was yeah there for about five years of my life, and um, that yeah in that time period, um, it was interesting because um, my mom told me that um, whenever they started the adoption process, they were I was about you know about. One, yeah, so. quite, yeah, not quite one years old when we we started the adoption process, and um, so that was about mm, two thousand five. Um, God just laid it on our hearts to grow our family through adoption, and so um, my husband and I did all the paperwork. You know, the home studies, the home visits, the the application, all of that, and. Um, we were told that we would wait for about a year and we would have um, 
a, a new child in our family. But around that time, China, the international adoption process slowed way down. Um, so we were just kind of put in this long waiting queue, just <laughs> waiting to meet our future child. And what we thought would be one year actually ended up being four years. And during that time, we had to renew our paperwork and our home study um, a few times because um, it, it only lasts for <laughs> for a little while. And, you know, along the, the way, we're like, God, is this really your plan for us? Is this really what you want us to do? You know, we, we got a little bit discouraged, but um, we did see little signs from from God, signs of hope and encouragement in the form of ladybugs, which is amazing. <laughs> and every time, anytime we doubted, we would step outside and we would see ladybugs in the weirdest places. Like one tree that we walked past every day never had ladybugs, but one day when we were doubting, it was covered from the top to the bottom, covered <laughs> with ladybugs. Another time we were at the top of Pikes Peak, which is a 14,000 foot mountain in Colorado. And I don't know if you know this, but ladybugs don't fly if it's colder than 50 degrees. But we were on top of the mountain and it was like 30 degrees, very cold, very windy. And, you know, we're just like, God, is this what you want us to do? And here comes this ladybug just flying around us and lands on us. All right. So. You got to tell us <laughs> why and how did ladybugs have so much significance for you? What, 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 what gave you that? That is just how God spoke to us. I don't know why ladybugs, but you know what? We decided to decorate her bedroom in ladybugs, <laughs> like on her bedspread and everything. So cool. So, so um, interesting. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, I would say that's kind of a miracle in that sense, you know, like seeing something that really shouldn't be there, but it is there. It's the fact that God was moving and he was like, I want you to do it. I want, you know, I want you to be... Um, be a part of this and so yeah it was a really um amazing to hear that and that that side of the story in that sense and uh you know for me um I apparently was not um ready you know to be adopted you know God didn't want me to be adopted right away and so it was just a process of him um being part of both sides of you know this adoption and he's like I want you to be both sides to be ready and so um and my mom pointed this out, and she's like, well, I guess it was just perfect timing whenever it actually did happen. We it were both his perfect timing. Yeah, we were, we were both on that side, and we were both ready to meet each other when it happened. Of course, it was four years later, but still uh, God's timing of four years later. <laughs> um, so that was really amazing to, to hear that. Yeah, well, so that, that's what gets you here. Um, so, so what happened next? How, how did, how did you continue to grow towards Christ? Well, um, I, so of course when I'm, you know, I didn't know who Jesus was. I didn't know about Christianity or any of that, of course, at such a young age, but, um, when I was adopted and, uh, you know, I had to move to a new, uh, place, a new, in, into a new family. I had no idea really about, and, um, just adjusting was a very hard thing, especially for at such a young age, as a child, you're like, still, uh, you know, accustomed to the world, really, and so just moving from um, another country to another country, and sure. a new home, new culture, new, new language, language, yeah. uh, language was very hard. Um, and you can't tell at all, like no. your English is, doesn't have any accent or any hint of anything, well, like that's so cool. Well, fun fact, I actually do not know my um, mother tongue anymore, I did, don't, didn't pick it up again, so um, yeah, I I speak full English now. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, and so after that, it was just a, an adjustment. Uh, quit, took quite a long time trying to um, adjust to the routine and schedules and figure out, oh, this is my new family. I'm going to be with them, you know. And um, I'm sure at such a young age, I, you know, my parents and my family had gone to church since forever. So they, you know, they... Um, included that into the whole new uh, cultural routine, and so um, I just had to learn how to how to be myself a little bit, and not try to be. Well, of course, I had to help. You know, um, learn how to speak English, be a part of the culture, and so I, in that way, for me, like I tried to put my identity in what I was trying to learn and what I had there, and um, I, I didn't know. I still didn't know Jesus then, but the fact that, you know, I was like, I have to be like these people. I have to 
sure. walk and talk like them and do what they do. And so I didn't un- understand the fact that, you know, I'm in Jesus Christ and God brought me here for a reason. But of course, it took a long time trying to realize that and that, you know, I wasn't alone. I, you know, and the um, hard part was for me was to adjust to like um, trusting people and trusting that, oh, this is my family. I'll be fine. They'll protect me. They'll be here because I was an orphan. I didn't know who to trust. I didn't know, you know, who to, I would be with. And um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, the the experience that you're talking about <clears throat> is one that is is amazing. It's 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 so 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 different than uh, than than what I think some people understand or experience. And what's wild is that everyone has their own experience, right? Um, <clears throat> and so no none are the exact same. <clears throat> but uh, it's really, really amazing to think through. You weren't just a lot of people that get adopted <clears throat> are adopted into same culture, same language, same. Um, your change and your <clears throat> the, the the difference between your adoption and maybe someone that is a U.S. based adoption is substantial. It's a lot, <clears throat> a lot bigger and has a lot more impacts. And uh, and so yeah, the the I, I would have never really considered that you weren't just jumping into a new family. You're jumping into a new everything, a new, a new everything. And uh, you know, you hear people say things like the hardest thing to do is is uh, they talk about changing jobs or losing a family member or uh, or having a child or getting married. You know, there's big big things. Well, you kind of put all of that into one little space. You know, like you, you didn't get married, obviously. But I'm just saying, like. <laughs> You, you went from from everything you knew was changed, and you're introduced to a new space, a new family, new everything, new language. Uh, just that by itself would be huge. Um, and so, Savannah, it's I, I can't imagine the process of of what you felt, what you thought, what your mind was doing to try to accommodate and acclimate and just uh, get invested into the place and accept it. Um, so, man, it's amazing. And knowing you again, you're like, you're, you're amazing. Like uh, that's, that's, that's just a great thing that God has done in your life. Um, so, so, so tell us as much more as you can. Um, so I'm actually going to backtrack a little bit, but um, part of the process was trying to, uh, so my mom was telling me that the process slowed down um, so much and she was, they were just trying to find a way to adopt some child. And um, one of them was, you know, one option was to adopt um, me because uh, I I was born with a cleft lip and palate. Uh, do you have a definition? <clears throat> I don't. Just minor, minor medical needs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, while we were waiting to be matched with a child, I just want to clarify that we didn't get to pick a child like the, the adoption agency matched us with Savannah. But um, while we were waiting, we kind of broadened our avenue a little bit and we were open to adopting an older child with um, minor medical needs. And um, as Savannah said, she had a, a, a cleft lip and palate and that that does um, play into her her role of who she is and how she formed her identity and her struggles with that and everything. But I'll let her tell you her story. Um, thank you. And so just for me, a big theme in my life is identity and finding myself and who I am. Um, and one of those is physically looking like someone, you know, who belongs. Um, of course, as a Asian, um, a minority in America, it's not, you know, I still have a different face, but especially with a cleft lip and palate and having to go sh- through a lot of extensive sh- surgeries and um, just facial uh, readjustments to, you know, function, um, it was very hard for me to, like, accept that I looked very different and, uh, um, you know, I didn't know if people would accept me I who I am, um, and just, yeah, growing up generally, um, you know, going to school and, like, trying to uh, figure out what, you know, how to make friends and, you know, to new people. I, I you know, I, we've moved several times, but, um, and just readjusting, um, I think, for me, I think I'm just about the the expert of change and trying to figure that out, which, trust me, I'm still not, uh not the perfect person to figure that all out, um, but just learning that I am who I am and that I 
uh, was created by God and that I am just fine as I look. And so, um, and then, you know, people, of course, were the most friendly and they accepted me and um, I became part of their friend groups. And I just, it was amazing to see that I too can be accepted into, you know, by friends and family and um, with, you know, despite all my differences and um, yeah, any any time you're uprooted from uh, a familiar place, a familiar culture, surroundings, um, of course you want to fit in. You know, wherever you land, wherever you move to, um, that's just that's natural and normal. Um, and I know in the future, Savannah, you will you will move many times as you grow and <laughs> take different career paths and everything. But now you you firmly have your identity rooted in Christ, and Christ is always with you, and that. That makes that that change in that journey so much easier rather than trying to rely on yourself. Yeah, and so just seeing that um, I have a family that was very deeply rooted in God and, uh, you know, going to church every Sunday and just being immersed in the Word. And um, I just saw, I saw through that. And um, so at my old church, I got baptized there. And, um, but I will say it didn't really I didn't really feel anything too different. Obviously, I accepted Christ, but it actually wasn't until last wasn't until last year that I really felt different. I felt like you know the Holy Spirit was really working through me and seeing that, oh, you know, I could I want to make some change happen. And um, one step is telling your testimony. And so I, um, you know, especially this year too, as I said that during the summer, it really hit me, and I'm like. I need to do it. I need to do it right now. And so um, just seeing that and that I can make uh, make change happen. Well, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, that's uh, that's incredible, all of it. The, the, the difficulty, the transitions, the changes, the uh, identity piece. Um, it's, it's, it's wonderful that God has, has sustained you and given you strength and called you his own and kind of walked with you step by step through all of that. And, uh, and I love to hear that. So how, how is your relationship with God different now than maybe it was a couple of years ago? Well, I definitely feel a lot closer and I feel more like intentional about whenever I go into the word, like reading what I'm reading and seeing what wisdom God has for me there. And um, just seeing that, I've changed, <laughs> I've changed my, my parents' lives because of what they did for me, and my life was definitely changed, and so just seeing that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a part of that, and um, one thing for sure is now I've come to accept that um, I've realized that, um, sorry, I've realized that as I am physically adopted, I am also spiritually adopted into Christ's family. And so seeing that, you know, double resemblance, like both physically and spiritually, that I can um, show others that mm. they can too, and not, not physically, but spiritually be adopted into Christ's family. Yeah, and I want yeah. that for them too. Yeah, of course. Well, that, that sounds so amazing. <clears throat> um, you had mentioned earlier that at Cairo they were talking about this generational um Revival? What was the word? Revival generation was Revival the theme. Gener- yeah. Yeah. T- tell us a little bit about that. <clears throat> so every um, Cairo, there's always a main theme that happens the whole week. Um, and so this week was, or this past week was Revival Generation, which talks about how we can be a light for the um, future generations. And uh, especially for our younger generation, it is very hard for us to want to Uh, tell about the gospel because we are very scared of how other people will think of us and how, you know, will it be accepted or will we be made fun of for it? And um, so the speaker, Nick Person, was just highlighting on that and he told some stories um, about Jesus and how he was, as uh, Nick said, a catalyst of um, of the gospel and he himself would be uh, performing miracles, but not without an, an intentional um, purpose behind that. And um, he just wanted us to um, understand that no matter where we are, no matter who we are, um, we can make a difference. And it doesn't matter how far or how close we are with somebody, we can um, reach out and just bring them 
uh, Jesus is light. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I've heard it said that every generation has responsibility to reach their generation. And, uh, and it's, it's one of those things that I know, uh, some of the older generations wonder what's going to happen with the younger generations if no one shares. And, and so, so much of, of our heart and prayer and effort goes into training believers who are younger on how to share their faith with their peers. Um, at the very least, and ideally with their children and eventually subsequent generations that are coming. Um, but, but Savannah, to hear your heart for it, to hear that there's other young people in our, in our student base that have gone on these mission trips that went to youth camp. Uh, obviously, I get to see some of it in my own family with my daughters as well. Uh, to, seeing, to seeing the way that, that God is working among your generation to shine the light of Christ to uh, to the places and people that you interact with and see and that you take extreme effort to go and see, you know, like uh, Mexico is just not like it's here. It takes a lot of work to take a mission trip and to raise the funds and to go sit in another country that speaks a whole nother language again, <laughs> and then uh, a different culture and figure out how to share the gospel in those cultures. And, uh, and so there's been some fun stories that have come out of that. I, I, I don't mean to bounce around all over the place, but uh, someone was telling me that when they went uh, and shared their testimonies and shared the gospel that day, kind of in street evangelism, there were people that came to faith uh, for the first time um, because of, again, kind of a messed up schedule. We trying to change the plan, and now you go out, and then there's six people that devote themselves to Jesus for the first time. What a cool thing. Go ahead. Um, so I j- yeah, backtrack back to Cairo again, but um, <laughs> Nick actually talked about like the um, – how we have interruptions in our life and we think that, oh, this is not what we're, we planned. This is not what we wanted. And then we're like, God, why are you interrupting, you know, this important moment or this something that's happening right now? And um, Nick was saying that interruption is like purposeful, purposeful. It is, um, you know, God's intention to make that happen because something greater will happen. And so going back to Mexico, like, so we do, um, the downtown church in Cancun does like a, uh, it's called the bazaar, but it's like a, um, a chance for people to come to the church. And we usually, um, have a whole bunch of clothes and, uh, paintings that we do, um, to like give, uh, give them and hand out. And, um, so they have clothing to wear and, um, for their, for their family. And, um, we unfortunately did not get to do that because it was raining that day. And, um, we, uh, yeah, you know, the interruption happened and we're like, what are we supposed to do? We can't, you know, we can't reach people, but we're like, hold up in a second. We can't, you can be reach people, um, you know, through the, through, um, spreading the gospel through our paintings and telling about what we thought about those, uh, pictures or paintings that we had. Um, and so, yeah, when we gave out our art and we came back together at the end of that, uh, I believe it was six people accepted Christ just from that. Our, you know, small little group, well, not small, but our group, you know, went out onto the streets to preach and we, we saved people. And that was amazing to hear. Yeah, that's, that's just so exciting uh, to hear the stories and to see it. And uh, it really is one of those cool little things that that trip does every year. And, and just to give you a little explanation for your listeners is we ask that team every year to kind of prepare two art pieces uh, before they leave on the trip. So whether they paint something or they share a picture that they've taken that's meaningful to them or, or, uh, or even create it when they get there, uh, it's something that has meaning that allows them to share a story. So when a person, when they see a person, someone comes to the bazaar to pick up their clothes and they say, hey, there's this art, pick one that you like, and then we'll have the artist tell you why they chose that for here. Uh, it gives each person an opportunity to share the story. So this year they took the art pieces out and they just gave them away to people. And as they gave them away, they had opportunity to share their story. And so what a cool thing. And listeners, if, you're, if you've never told or shared your story, this is like a really key component to, to being faithful um, your story matters and your story is unique and your story, uh, can only be told, uh, by you really. Um, 
because it's your experience. And it also means there's no right or wrong. You can't do it the right way or the wrong way. Um, and so over the years, I've done a lot of different trainings on how to share stories. Some of them are very short, like 15 seconds. And some of them are three to five minutes, you know, and you kind of feel like you need that elevator pitch. You need the 30 second version, you need the three minute version, and you need the 30 minute version where you could really unpack kind of the big picture of what God has done. Um, but if you've never done that, I would tell you, do it. It's a really important thing. Write it down somewhere. Your story matters. And uh, some people think that their story is not exciting enough. They haven't done enough bad stuff, or maybe they haven't had enough trauma in their past. Or, or But listen, every story is a great story because all of us, uh, whether we grew up in the church or whether we came from far from from the church, um, it really, it really doesn't matter because God redeems every one of us. Um, and, and without him, gosh, well, what would we be? What would we look like? And, uh, so that's a, a great thing. I hope you take some time. If you're listening, take some time to, to think about the story that you have, the story of how God has entered your life and how he's changed you and maybe how different you would be if you'd never met him. So, uh, Savannah, you're getting ready to go to college. Yes, I am. You're about to leave home. All, uh, some of that same transition that you've talked about uh, is about to be a new version of that. You're a, a stronger uh, adult. You are, are well prepared. You are. You have a good foundation. So what are you looking forward to? Um, everything, actually. I'm just excited to see what... So I'm going to Grand Canyon University uh, in Phoenix, and I'm just, um, I'm really excited to see what they have to offer. I've already seen a little bit, but, um, I'm just so excited to jump into what I want to study, and, um, if I'm being honest, sorry, Mom, um, (laughs) I'm ready to move away from home for a little (laughs) bit. Um, I, yeah, I've always wanted to move away, but of course I'm going to Arizona, which is a lot hotter than Texas. I don't know why I did that, but uh, I think it'll be fun, and I'm just excited to meet new people. I've already met r- my roommate, and um, just, yeah, jump in and um, live out Christ, too. I'm ready to like join a church there and uh, be a part of the community. Listen, from a mom's perspective, it's sad when your kids move away, uh, <laughs> but there's also this like deep pride that comes with it where you're like, you know, like... If your child lives with you forever, there's comes to a time where you're like, this is not okay. So like, get out of the house. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bittersweet moment for your parents. And so they're going to be sad to see you go, but so proud to see you go and succeed. And so, um, tell us about what you're planning to study. Like this whole testimony thing interacts with your plan. So tell, tell us about what you're thinking about, what's your field of study and what are you pursuing? So since um, my story is very based on like, you know, it's very close to close to my heart and I just um, I really want to, you know, so what I want to study is um, film um, and making movies and the purpose for me in the making movies is to tell people stories like whether fictional or real life. I just want to be able to tell people stories because they're very unique. As Chad said, testimonies are very unique and um, just seeing that I, you know, I want to visually um, show that to people all because, you know, everybody watches some something and um, entertainment is a big thing in everywhere across the world. And that's how we connect too because we connect with the characters that are in there. And um, I want to be able to be a part of that. Um, and so th- for me, it's just seeing that, um, right now I'm telling my testimony, but I want others to be able to tell their stories and so I can show it on, on, um, on, um, uh, the, on media. And so they can see that too. That's so exciting. You know, uh, I think movies have been around for just right around a hundred years, maybe a little less, uh, but storytelling has been around since the beginning of time, right? There's always been the storytellers and every culture has them. And they, uh, some ways, record important events. Sometimes they tell uh, epic uh, adventures. Uh, sometimes they tell dramatic uh, things that grab your heart and twist it up a little bit. Uh, but over and over and over again, like that medium has been something that gives people hope. Uh, and, and Savannah, it's one of the areas that I'm so excited about for you and for us too. Like as you grow and your ability there, like there are so many ways that you could help us learn and grow as well. And, uh, and as God continues to increase your capacity for in those ways as a storyteller, 
uh, we I can't wait to see uh, the impacts of it. And uh, either way, whether it's in a secular environment or in a, in a Christian environment, whatever that looks like, uh, I'm excited to see what it looks like. We need storytellers uh, moving towards what's next. Yeah. Um, back to what you said, Chad, like, you know, there are storytellers from way, way beyond us. And um, I would say that God is the first storyteller because he created us and he created life and he wanted to write a whole eternity about it. Um, and so just seeing that, you know, we, he started it and he gave us the um, creativity to do that. And so I want to be a part of that and um, show others that God is a part of their lives and, um, that, you know, we can, we can write whatever we can. Um, and especially, um, if that's talking about Jesus and how he changed our stories. And, um, for me, I think I really want, I, what my dream is to be a part of the, um, like the mainstream, like the secular environment of the, um, industry. And because I feel like that's really where it's needed. Um, like, telling about the gospel and um, seeing that people can't find their identities in whatever their their work is or whoever they become in those movies. Um, I would love to work on a Christian set, but um, I think it's beyond that and um, just playing my part in, as you said, missions here, um, like being the, the mission field for me is the film industry in general, and I want to be a part of telling, um, you know, telling Jesus there and... Um, it's going to be hard, I know, but um, I I know Jesus will be with me. She's going to change Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I hope so. <clears throat> oh, Savannah, you are a voracious reader. You have this huge library <laughs> at home. Oh, and gosh. you always ask very challenging questions, deep questions. And I know those two traits will serve you well in the film industry and telling stories and, and um, capturing other people's stories as well. I can't wait to see how that goes. But I also want you to know, Savannah, that you're not going to be alone. Like when you get there in a month into your college, you'll be like, oh, I miss home. <laughs> like everything's like different yeah. and people are different. And one day maybe you'll be in Hollywood and you'll do the same thing. Like, oh, <laughs> this is hard and this is difficult. And it's a whole new language, not technically, but very, I mean, actually probably technical language. And 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 the people are going to be like all those places, like just know you're not alone. Like you represent so many people who love you, who have who have invested in you, your family, but most of all, of course, Lord himself, like he's given you so much ability and talent and skill and he's always with you. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what God's going to do uh, in these coming months and years. Um, but don't forget us. We love you. And you are, <laughs> you I are won't. supported. And, and, uh, and so as you go, just know that you're, you're taking a lot with you. Yes, and I, I really want to thank my whole family for being a part of that, like changing my life and um, just, you know, introducing uh, God to me and who he is and knowing that, you know, I have somebody who's taking care of me and who is there from the start, like even if I didn't know him. Well, Dad and I will certainly miss you very, very much. Um, but I know a lot of people here at FBC have poured into you over the years and invested a lot of time in you. And and um, I just want to thank them as well for your spiritual growth and um, becoming the beautiful young woman that you are. <laughs> yes, me too. Um, there's a lot of leaders and a lot of uh, friends that I've that I've made here. And I would say um, that FBC is like my second home. I mean, my mom works here, but <laughs> you know, like my, my, my dad's part of it. My sister was part of it. And so it's just seeing that we've gone literally a giant happy family. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, the, the reality is that there's a lot of people that have invested in you and your family over the years. Your family couldn't have done it alone either. Uh, and so they had a strong support system around sure. them that were to helping sure. take care of them while they're taking care of you and everything along the way. And so we praise God for that large spiritual family uh, that you can find probably very clearly in New Mexico, oh, New Mexico in Arizona and, uh, and anywhere else that God takes you. Like it's amazing thing about this body of Christ. Uh, it is everywhere. And so well, thank you. Anything else you want to share before we finish up? Well, I would just encourage the listeners to um, take heart on telling testimony because it's a very powerful um, ally you have. And um, as Chad said again, um, each testimony is very unique. And so don't think that your story is not unique or it won't have any impact on anybody because the people around you know 
or the people that you, you know, sit in um, different places with or talk to, they will, if they hear your story, they will, they'll be changed. And so I just encourage that you guys all um, try to, try to tell your testimony in some way or format. Um, Of course, it doesn't have to be in public or anything, but um, God wants you to tell it. So Mm. go and tell. Amen. 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 Heather, anything you would add? Oh, this has just been an amazing journey for me as a mom, just um, watching Savannah live out her faith. Um, you know, she she didn't know Jesus when she first came into our family, but she does now. And that has changed my life. It has changed many other people's lives as well, her friend circle. And, and I just pray that she will take that with you, take that with her into the future. I love it. I love it. Well, Savannah, it's also just a really cool thing. This reminder in a medium like this, a podcast, you can tell your story. You can share it with your friends. You can record this. So if you're listening and you're like, hey, I've never done that, but maybe interesting, let me know. We'd love to to maybe get you on the podcast and, and see if we can get more people's stories out there. And I'll just say one more thing. Um, so the this podcast is called So That, and um, I was reading um, a Bible verse the other day, and it was, uh, I think it was, Oh, I don't remember what it was, but it it had so that and um and so it was just very clear to me that um you know we have a story so that we can tell the world about it and um for me it's just you know I'm going to tell my story through movies because mo- you know entertainment reaches across borders and I want everybody to to know you know other people's stories and feel that and um just know Jesus through all that. Yeah, yeah, that's I, I try to wrap up every podcast with this reminder of why we do this, right? Why has God saved us? Why has he blessed us? Why does he he promise to give us eternal life? It's so that through us those around us can can see that hope and light. Uh, over and over and over the scriptures have this AB kind of promise. The why does God make his face shine on us, all these kind of things. And then there's that little connector that says, so that his name will be known among the nations and his salvation among all peoples. And so as you go, uh, if you're listening today, as you go, be sure to be that blessing to others and let that so that uh, play itself out in your life well. Savannah, we're so thankful for you. We're so proud of you. And, uh, and we'll be praying for you. Listeners, if you guys have any comments or questions you want to talk about, any things you want to be on the podcast, let us know. We'd love to, to talk to you, and maybe we can do that. So have a wonderful day, and God bless. We are so thankful that you joined our podcast today. We would love to hear any feedback you may have for us. Remember, Psalm 67 says, May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us. So that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation among all nations. Don't forget why the Lord blesses us. It's so that we can be a blessing to those around us. Until next time, God bless.